Hey everyone, welcome again. In this Python tutorial, we are going to learn about classes and objects in Python. So before we get into the details of Python classes, how you'll define them and use it, let's in general understand class and objects in object-oriented programming. So this is the similar example that I took for the Java OOPS concept. Now for the Python, uh, we'll use the similar concept. So basically similar example, I would say. Now in object-oriented programming, class is nothing but a blueprint. You can think of it as a blueprint. So say, for example, if you see on my screen here, I have a class employee. So previously, when we didn't have any softwares and stuff like that, we used to have the paper forms. And the paper forms were the blank forms which had a predefined structure with the attributes and the details that need to be filled in, right? Now those paper forms, you can correlate them with the classes. And then when a particular employee, say for example, Rama, Jay, Alice, or Sam, any of these employees, say for example, when they join the organization and they are supposed to fill their personal details within that particular form, then that filled information or the filled form, completed form with the specific information of the employee becomes an object. Okay, so classes are nothing but the blueprint and object is the real object or basically the relevant information specific to a particular person or a particular type, right? So object as in general, so any things that you see around yourself, right? So like the animals, they are all objects. We are objects, computer, monitors, they are all object. Now, when we are, say, for example, building a house, right? So house has a layout. When we are building a computer, computer has a design and that design is done into form of you know, very complex templates, right? So it has multiple modules and each of those modules might have one template. And then there is a overarching template that combines all, all of these things together to build a one computer. Similar is true with the house. So when you are trying to build a house, you do not just go ahead and order all the materials and start building without any of the blueprint or plan, right? So you have the plan, how many rooms you want, where you want the doors to be, where you want kitchen to be. So all this information which goes into the plan is a blueprint. When that blueprint is utilized to build a house, that becomes an object. So the real house is an object. A person is an object. The information filled about that person in a form is an object, right? So this is a brief introduction about the class and object. So, and this is true for any programming language. This is not very specific to um, Python or Java. Class and object in general, this concept remains same. And when these programming languages were developed, this has been kept into mind because it is a lot easier to think the classes and object and structure your program in the and correlate them with the real life examples as much as you can because then it helps you to solve the actual real problems because software is nothing but it will solve the real problem of the person people and the process so it has to really correlate itself or the programming language and how the object oriented programming concepts are being defined they need to correlate themselves with the real world example. So that's all about the classes and object. Now let's go ahead and see how you can define a class in Python programming. Okay, so we'll go to PyCharm and let me quickly create a new Python file and I'll name it as Python classes object. Okay, so Defining class in Python is very, very simple. So there is a keyword class. Okay. So as soon as you say class and then you provide the name of the class. Now I'll take the similar example, the employee. So say for example, now we are building a software to get the employee information on the software in the software, basically not on the paper form. So we want to remove the paper form and want when somebody on board, we want to get all that information in the software. So I'll define a template first. So template is a class, right? So we can correlate that class is a template. So the actual the, the blank paper form that employees used before we can define a similar template as a class, right? So we can simply say employee the name of the class, right? And that's pretty much it. So 
followed by the colon. If you do not want to define anything in this particular class as of now, so if, for example, you want to just declare uh, the class and you want do not want to put any of the details within the class, you can simply put the pass keyword and then the error won't be thrown. Okay, but we will be defining the class. We will be defining the variables within the class or the attributes, basically not the variables, the attributes within the class. So uh, a class attribute in employee case will be name, email, first name, last name, email, the department that is joining, right? So to define those attributes, what we'll do is we'll start with the method. So within the class, there will be method, right? So there is a method in it so initialize so the first thing we have to do is we have to call this particular method and what this init method does is you, if, if you're coming from java background you can just correlate it with the constructor in java right so whenever you are trying to create an instance of this particular class this method will be called first okay so now with this method we can instantiate the values or the attributes that you want to define in this particular class so for, say for example the first argument that this particular method takes is self and self you can correlate with this if you're coming from java background so self what this will do is this is the this points to the instance of the particular object that you will create i'll cover that in just a moment so as of now you just make sure that self needs to be there okay now say for example this particular class or this particular employee uh, class needs to have first name last name and email okay now within this particular method what we'll do do is we'll say self dot first name so f name and then we will assign these attributes the class attributes or this particular attributes first name last name and email to these variables now these doesn't need to be same so first name need to be doesn't need to be exactly same here so i can simply say like this f name is self dot name but it is a good practice to keep all these names same right so we can simply say self dot last name so i say l name and and then similarly for the email all right now a class will have an attribute so so there will be attributes and then there can be functions as well say for example if you are uh, you are building a car right so uh, a blueprint for the car will be how many doors how many you know wheels okay so all all that information goes into the blueprint but then there are various other functions so basically it's the speed of the car right so that that all information can be defined as the function so here say for example once the person or the employee enters all the information then we want to greet that particular person we want to call a function or in the software that function needs to be called and that function should automatically get the first name of the person and greet the person or send an email greeting to the particular person right so we'll define a function within this particular class so what we can say is we can say greet and then person so we'll just provide the name of the method and then you will see that it this method by default takes this self uh, argument or uh, the parameter within it right so this is important so the the self parameter is important in the methods and now what we'll simply say is we'll simply say print hello welcome okay and then we'll provide the name of the person so we'll simply say plus and then we'll say so whatever not that name. so we'll have to provide the self dot f name okay so that this particular self keyword is important in all the cases because this self will point to the particular instance right so say for example i am joining an organization so when we say self so if an instance of my or manish is created then this self will point to the instance of manish okay and then if i'll call the person greet person then it will greet the person of the name to which it is pointing if sam is joining the organization this 
self will point to Sam, the instance of Sam, right? So that is why this self keyword is really, really important. Okay. So now we have defined the class. We have defined the attributes there. So in, the, in this init um, method, which is basically you can think of a constructor. So this method will always be called whenever the instance of this particular class is created or instance of the employee class is created, right? And then we can use this greet person method to greet that particular person. So this is very simple implementation of a class in Python, right? Now, say for example, I join an organization. So employee one joins an organization and employee one is me. Okay. So I can create an instance of this class. So basically I'm filling the information as, as you can correlate it like filling the information in the paper form. So here in the software, I'm filling the information. So what I can do is I can simply say employee and fill all the information. So I can say my first name is Manish. My last name is Verma. As I do in the paper form, I'm doing it on the computer. And then my email is mv at rcvacademy.com. All right. So I provided the details that are required in the particular form. So form requires first name, last name and email. And we do not need to provide self in this particular case when we are creating the instance of this particular class. The reason is because when we are creating the instance of this class, these values will or basically the self will point to the instance of this particular class. So this self points to this particular instance. And then if I say employee two and employee two is, I'll put the information there. I'll say, say Rama here. So we have created the instance of this class. So we have created two instance of these class. So you can think of it as two filled forms of the employee template, right? If you're say, for example, refer to the physical form. So this is the filled form of the employee Manish. And this is the second filled form of the employee Rama. Okay. Now this self is basically a reference to each of these objects. So now because we have instantiated the employee, different employees, the self will reference to those objects, to those specific objects. And that's the relevance of self here. Okay. Now, say for example, I want to print the name of the employee one. Okay. So what I can do is I can say, I can call employee one and then I can name, I can print the first name of the employee and then I can print the first name of employee two, right? So I can simply run this. So you can see first name of both the employees got printed. Okay. Now in order to call the method that we have, uh, we have declared here or we have defined here. So greet person. So what we can simply do is we can say emp one dot greet person. Okay. So we'll say emp one dot greet person. Okay. And whom do we have to greet? So basically, if we say greet person, then it will by default get the first name, right? So here we have defined that you just need to print hello, welcome to RCV Academy and needs to get the first name, right? So you'll greet by the first name. So we can simply run this and you can see that hello, welcome to RCV Academy. And if we say employee two dot greet person, then it will greet Rama, right? So that's how the classes and objects will work within Python, right? So classes and objects are very general concept applicable to all programming languages and just try to correlate with the example that I have given. Try to correlate with it with the house example whenever you are building a house or a builder is building the house. So he has a blueprint and then based on the customer's requirement, he can customize it to 4BHK or 3BHK or 2BHK, right? So so that is when when those customized houses are built, those become objects. But the actual blueprint that a builder has, the, the floor plan, etc., is the blueprint, right? So that is the reference that the builder uses to build the actual objects, which are the houses. Okay. So just try to think, correlate. There are lots and lots of examples. Everything around us is object, right? And objects have attributes. 
and then objects have the ability to move or or they have certain behaviors right so those are all you can correlate them with the methods okay so this is basically very very easy concept to understand class as an object and then within python this is basically how you will define your first class and then the first method within the python class so that's all for this particular tutorial i hope it was helpful and clear thank you very much for watching